what to show itself in deeds more than in words. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, found a model in Jesus Christ, the inspiration of his life. He prayed, studied and worked for many hard years so that he might lead others to live in a manner which was at once more fully human and more fully divine. He preserved a record of his spiritual experiences there which evolved into a booklet, The Spiritual Exercises, which was used by him and later by his fellow Jesuits to lead others to God by meditation on the life of Jesus. It is still considered as one of the most powerful exercises on the life of a spiritual person. Inigo Lopez de Loyola, who later in life took the name of Ignatius, is the reason for our celebration of today's feast. He is the reason why we, as a part of the extended family of the Society of Jesus, have virtually gathered to pay our homage to this great soul who had set the hearts of several thousands of men and women across the globe on fire over the past five centuries. This year is of a special significance for us Jesuits, the religious congregation St. Ignatius of Loyola and his first companions founded. We have celebrated the 500th anniversary of the spiritual conversion of St. Ignatius at the Battle of Pamplona on May the 20th, 2021 and combine it with the 400th anniversary of the canonization of St. Ignatius of Loyola and his companion St. Francis Xavier on March the 12th, 2022. Thus, Reverend Father Arturo Sosa, the Superior General of the Society of Jesus, has invited us to observe the two significant events starting from May the 20th, 2021 to July the 31st, 2022 as the Ignatian year to have a spiritual renewal like Inigo on the theme to see all things new in Christ. If there was one event in the life of St. Ignatius which had changed the course of his life from a man of the world to a man of God, it was in 1521 at the Battle of Pamplona when a cannonball shattered one of his legs, wounding the other. The cannonball not only shattered him physically, but it also shattered the follies of the world he was clinging to, the desire to vain glory, and his longing to win the favor of a lady of a high ranking. As most of our teachers and students have been forced to remain indoors, very much like half of humanity across the globe. I am reminded of Inigo, who spent about six months in bed, convalescing from butcherous operation he went through to set the leg right after the fall. It was these moments of aloneness which brought him face to face with the soul-searching questions leading him to leave behind his worldly desires and ambition to seek Christ the poor in the garb of a pilgrim. We too may be going through our own share of pain and suffering indoor due to prolonged lockdown and restrictions to move freely as we used to do. 
even as we go through these agonizing moments within locked doors we may go through experiences which could help us to look at new horizons the lord is inviting us to as it happened in the case of st ignatius may the feast of st ignatius today help us to identify the cannonball moments of our own lives so that imbued with a sense of doing great things for god and his people we may commit with greater enthusiasm and zeal to the fulfillment of the mission entrusted to our care may saint ignatius of loyola pray to god for us so that we may follow his footsteps in doing greater things for the glory of god 23 october 1491 spain er yorola nodir tire loyola te janmo hoy santo ignatius er society of jesus namok dhormiyo dharar প্রতিষ্ঠাতা এবং প্রথম সুপিরিয়র জেনারেল এই মহান ধর্মতত্ত্ববিদের জীবনের জবনিকা পতন ঘটে একত্রিশে জুলাই পনেরোশো ছাপ্পান্ন রোমে সেই মহাপুরুষের প্রতি রইল আমাদের অসীম শ্রদ্ধা
would like to highlight one important dimension of the celebration of the feast of St Ignatius this year. The celebration of the feast comes within the celebration of the Ignatian year. And this Ignatian year was inaugurated one month ago with what we call as the cannon ball moment. From his shattered dreams, he started building dreams of God. From a man of the world, he became a man of God. Ignatius was a very practical man. And as he started building up his godly dreams, he started observing what gave him happiness and what made him sad. And it was by picking up strains of these inner spiritual movements that he became a man of God. And he slowly realized that following God made him a happy man and made, gave him happiness which is lasting. And the worldly dreams left him with sad feelings. The good feelings he called consolation and the bad feelings he called desolation. And his life, he realized these movements between consolation and desolation. And by marking them very meticulously, he discovered a path of spiritual growth for himself and for others. The spiritual journey of Saint Ignatius ultimately led him to completely surrender to God's plans. Thus, the so-called cannonball moment which shattered his worldly dreams led him to a total surrender to God and thus discovering a new way of being in God. He began to perceive God in everything and everything in God. Now for us, at this moment of the pandemic, we are probably like St. Ignatius. So many of our dreams are shattered. Can we, like St. Ignatius, think once more, deeply discover the spiritual movements that are taking within us, discover what makes us happy, and discover what makes us sad and probably rebuild our lives in a new fashion. As St. Ignatius did, if we learn to do God's will properly, that will give us more freedom and joy. And probably if you continue to adhere to our selfish goals or worldly goals, probably we might continue to remain unhappy in the long run. Let St. Ignatius bless each one of us to be people who journey with God. May St. Ignatius' prayers and his intercession bless each one of us to be fuller human beings and uh, persons who are happy. Noble night, leader of a bravery, need the sun, oh, need the sun, we will fight, need the sway, need the sway. Oh, what the foes gather near, we don't fear, we don't fear, will not shun, will not quit, this is a noble career. We will fight ever true to death, to thee, true to God, to wait and be true to thee. Lead the sun gallantly, ever on valiantly, lead the banner to fight. It's right. All for God's own greater glory is our cry. Battle cry. Not for gain, not in vain is a fight in this life. But for God, who's a king, all our hearts to Him we bring. Growing stronger and stronger and fighting lasts longer and purer and purer to make heaven sure. The crosses and trials and many denials must hurt, but to die true, loyal to a king who reigns on high. Ignatius lead on on till we die.
Born in 1491, Ignatius was a different kind of saint. As the noted Jesuit historian Father John O'Molly S.J. observed, Ignatius redefined the traditional basis of saintliness, which usually involves a degree of unworldliness. On the contrary, Father O'Molly refers to Saint Ignatius as a worldly saint. Saint Ignatius made sure that the early Jesuits were spending most of their time in secular places like classroom, teaching less about the Bible and church doctrine and more about literature and early classics. He wrote letters to his missionaries asking them to write back not only about the ministries but about plants, wildlife and anything that in his words seems extraordinary. He wanted the Jesuits to search for God in everything. Saint Ignatius of Loyola was an inspiring person and inspired millions of people even centuries after his death. He started off as a brave and tough soldier but then turned into the founder of a religious order. Saint Ignatius is an epitome of a good man and has been a very great influence in my life. I myself take him as an inspiration to not lose hope in every downfall I have and to never lose my faith in God. Peace.